afternoon to each and every one. Could we all stand as we receive the body? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of the heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And, the God, sh and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Praise the Lord. Before we begin, we want to give any persons we find you all far to the back. There are seats to the front. If you can come forward and occupy the seats to the front, that will be greatly appreciated. So for those of you all who are sitting to the back, you can come forward a little and occupy the seats to the front. Praise the Lord. I thank you for your obedience, and we're going to continue. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Let us pray. Could we all stand as we pray? Eternal and heavenly God, we thank you for this opportunity where we can gather together as friends, well-wishers, relatives, families, we thank you for bringing them together here this afternoon as we pay our last respects to Carlton Richardson. We welcome the presence of the Holy Ghost in our midst at this time. We pray, O oh Lord, as we gather together, Lord God, for this send-off, we pray that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will comfort the heart of every mourner. You said in your word, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I pray that even right now you will comfort the hearts of those that gather together. We welcome the presence of the Holy Ghost in our midst. We commit this service into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, we want you to remain standing if you can. If you want to take your seats, you are free to do so. But we like you to stand as we just go into a short time of praise and worship unto God. 
Praise the Lord. Pleasant good afternoon, everyone. And extend our deepest condolences to the family, Diane and Cynthia and the entire family this afternoon. Amen. So we want to trade our sorrows and trade everything we have for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let's say yes to the Lord today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Joy of the Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Let's trade our sorrows and our pains today. I'm trading my sorrows, my pain, I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness no more. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let's say yes for the joy today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Jesus, for he cares for higher, higher. We lift him higher, 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 higher. We lift, lift Jesus higher. Sing, 
and sing. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. Praise the Lord. Oh, when the gates are open wide, I'll be sent to my Jesus side. I'm gonna shout, praise the Lord. Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over? Time when we get over yonder, oh, won't it be a time? We're gonna sing and shout, that's all about when we get over yonder. Sing and shout, that's all about when we get over yonder. Sing and shout, that's all about when we get over yonder, oh, won't it be a time? Right by the right by the My finger with a golden pen, a golden pen, a golden pen. Touch my finger with a golden pen. Right by the name of the Lord. Right by the name of the Lord. I said, right by the name, right by the name of the Lord. Touch my finger with a golden pen, a golden pen. I said, Lord, touch my finger with a golden pen. Right by the name of the Lord. Right by the name, right by the name. We're going to sing that song in your program, Rock of Ages. Praise the Lord, because he is truly our rock in these times. Amen. And to the family, Jesus is your rock today. Rock of Ages, well, class for me. Your songs are helping me singing. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water. Let the water and the blood from thy womb, this side which flows, be a set of a cure. Bleeding breath When my 
judgment. Lord, rock of ages and rock of ages. sing one more song. I will lift up my eyes to the hills and I trust family today. Put your eyes on Jesus. Your help comes from the Lord today. Amen. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and he said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved the Lord which keepeth thee oh my God and he will not slumber no Have your seats. At this time, we want to call to the podium the first scripture reading. And for persons coming to do the scripture reading, you are coming to the podium on my right. There's a microphone there, and there's also a Bible for those of you all who need one. So when you have a scripture reading or a tribute, you go straight to the podium and you do what needs to be done. We have the first scripture reading that will be done at this time. Pleasant afternoon. Today's first scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18. And here begin it. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherever comfort one another, wherever, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Here ended the word of the Lord. 
Praise God. Next up, we have a tribute. And the tribute will be done by Ricardo Seals. And I am seeing Lynette Louis. I'm not sure if they're doing it together or one after the other. Okay, so we have Ricardo will do his tribute first. And right after he's finished, Lynette Louis will come right after and pay her tribute. Pleasant afternoon to each and every one. Let me first extend condolences to the family, friends of the deceased. May God comfort you in this time. Love. 
God that Jesus said for me. me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it soothes my doubts and calms my fears and it drives Gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. For it reaches to the highest mountain. Hey, and it flows to the me strength from day to day it will never lose its power for it reaches to the highest mountain Ooh. and it flows to the lowest From day to day, it will never lose, it will never lose, it will never lose, it's power. The blood will never, ever lose its power. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for those two wonderful tributes. Mr. Ricardo Seals on the saxophone and Miss Lynette Louie with that wonderful rendition. We're moving right along on the program. We have our second scripture reading at this time, which will be done by Glenda Balfour. Good afternoon, friends and family. The scripture is taken from St. John chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father had life in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself, and given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his word. Moving right along, we have two more tributes. First will be done by Mr. Curtis D. Archie, followed by Lois or Louis Guy. Lois Guy. My apologies. So Mr. Archie, right after, will be followed by Lois Guy.
Good afternoon, church. No, we could do better than that. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Oh, that's better. I am humbled and happy to share with you briefly a little reflection on this great man. I think it was 29 and a half years ago, coming into the THA as a young officer in the Division of Community Development. One Miss Irene Beach introduced me to a series of very powerful, should I say, leaders in communities in Tobago. She will normally take us around. And I remember the very first person she introduced me to was, I, I, I knew him as Alan. I'm, I'm seeing Carlton and Adolphus, all them big shot movie names. I wonder if I'm in the same place. But I saw the picture and I said, that's the man. And I remember distinctively some conversations that we had. By the way, every time he every time he see me in Scarborough and I try to hide, me can't get away. Because he had some conversation for us to discuss. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, he might have been a simple human being to you, but he was a simple man with a lot of wisdom. I regard him as an iconic figure because he'd, he, he did help me in my career. One of the things that he, he said to me, young man, you gotta learn quickly on this job. Community development work is a grateful job and I live to see that. I spend a lot of time working with people like Mr. Richardson and I, I in, have I learned a lot from being around him. He was so passionate about the Glen Road community, and I guess all communities in Tobago. For instance, we, we, we had a series of meetings that we used to take to, around the island of Tobago to the various communities on a Saturday. And would you believe it? The division used to provide a, a, a bus. Alan was one of the first to meet for meetings to get out on that bus. And one day I remember a certain individual which I will not mention, didn't have any money to go to the meeting. And he, he quickly pushed his hand in his pocket and offered her. I, I, I call that selfless service. I know none of us are perfect human beings, including myself. But I thank God for the opportunity that I had to work with people like Mr. Richardson. Diane and his other siblings and children, friends and family. He was, to me, a good man, a good patriot, and a good citizen. I remember one, one, one other thing distinctively he said to me. He was at the community center very late one afternoon. And I don't know if most of you are aware that in the compound up there, CPEP plants a lot of uh, vegetables. When CPA plant, they think people want to come and reap. So he gave himself the role of a security officer. He said one evening he was there and some, somebody came to reap and he had to use a flashlight, like the, you know when police are roadblocks, or they'll be pinging their light and you had to stop and slow down. He said the person just turned back and go away. There by the thief, the people think. But seriously, on a more serious note, I know it's kind of somber for us. He is in a better place, I assume, and God has much more work for him to do where he is now. May his soul rest in peace and may his family find comfort in this few words. I thank you. Pleasant afternoon, everyone. Now, this tribute is specially dedicated, dedicated to my girl, that is my colleague and friend, Diane Richardson, and to the rest of the family. Yes, may God comfort you. Anytime you're feeling down, just remember, pray on. Judah 
was paralyzed by fear when they heard a mighty multitude was quickly drawing near but as they prayed for deliverance a victory would be I love that song. We have some talented people here, boy. Very talented people. Praise the Lord. Next up on the program, we have open tributes, and I just want to add some clarity to the open tributes. I want us to follow the pattern that those who pay tributes on the program did. If you have words, speak. If you have to sing, sing. Straight to the point, pay your tributes. Just keep in mind, persons may be coming right behind you. So the floor is open at this time to pay your tributes. Based on how long persons take, we will let you know how many more tributes we can take. So if you have a tribute, you can come make your way to the podium and pay your tribute. And we'll move along. My name is Herbert Smart from Mason Hall. I like to read this tribute for the friend, my friend, right? Good. 
In time like this, you need to save you. In time like this, you need a Good afternoon, church. My name is Henry Smith. On behalf of the Village Council Association Tobago Branch, which Mr. Allen was a part, and he was a very hard-working individual. He worked very hard to see the Village Council movement in Tobago go forward, and also worked to see the Glen Road Village Council, which he was the president. So on behalf of the association, I extend condolences to his family, and may God continue peace, and may he rise in glory.
Good afternoon again to the congregation. My name is Anthony Niles. Now I've been sitting in the audience here and I'm here in Glen Road, Glen Road, Glen Road. But I want to put this right at this present time. I would have known Ms. the deceased on the 19th of October, 1970. Neighbors, Dial Spring Trace, to be exact, a couple of footsteps away from Harmon's High School. I would really want to say, I think in those days I benefited from what you would say the community raised the child. I benefited from that. I don't know many of you would have benefited from that. I know I benefited from that. The disease, in my opinion, always a very unassuming person. I cannot recall seeing him vex. He always have a smile, walk the road. I can't remember seeing him jumping in any car to go anywhere because we live in Scarborough. Not like now everybody coming out and they're stretching out their hand and they want to go down in the Scarborough. That spring of Scarborough, right on the outskirts. His profession, I think in those days he would have been classed as one of the best painters. I think I see Mr. Holder, he can attest to that. He's sitting somewhere in the back there. So a person like him, I want to take a scripture from Second Timothy. Six to eight, which I think is similar. For I am not ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So I would say on behalf of myself and other neighbors of Dial Spring Trees, I must offer my condolence to Cynthia, Diane, and my good friend in the back there, as he leaned his head there, and other siblings, as we prepare to send my neighbor onto eternity. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shilma Samuel. I am neighbor. We grew up together with Alan, Diane, everybody. We like one big family, one big happy family. And I'm here just to say a few words, not much concerning. We grew up together like with them, as I said, and you know, we always remain close. And I was retired well now I'm about six years into retirement and I waited no I'm, it's more than six years I was about on my fourth year waiting on my pension and benefits and every time Alan come by us he'll be like show me you get your money back yet I said no boy he said you still waiting few times he came and he would always ask me if I see him in town. He'd be like, you get back your money yet? No, boy. Come, come, come. He carried me by the bank. He pushed his hand in the take out whatever, and he hand me something. He said, hold that. If I bounce him up again, hold that. <laughs> and one day he came and he said, you get back your money yet, girl? I said, no. He said, what are you waiting on? Girl, go out by the ombudsman. I said, me know nothing about ombudsman because I left here quite a while. So he's like, go back a let. I said, what part of back a let? He gave me the information and he sent me. Darling, thank God for him because I might have been still waiting. So when I went, these people didn't even have my files out. They're fixing up my retirement four years going. And it's when he sent me, the ombudsman woman was a lady, went straight on the phone, called Ministry of Education, bang, bang, bang. By the following two or three weeks after, I got back everything. So thanks to him, may he rest in peace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this will be the final tribute. 
Good afternoon. My name is Mavis Holder. Well, I'm from Wilson Road, close to Glen Road, but I'm married to a holder, so I end up in Glen Road. I didn't know Alan, but Alan knew all my brothers and sisters. But I was living away, and how I become to know Alan by the holder's bar, because Alan, my husband, is sister to the lady who runs the bar, and Alan always there. So Alan get to know me. And from the time I get to know Alan, all he's a very respectable man. Never call me by my name, Mrs. Holder, Mrs. Holder. Alan, you know, we are all not perfect. Alan may drink a little beer, but he was a gentleman. Never obscene, smiling, a little bit, but polite, nice. Talk about his daughter, his children. He loved his children because I think I was speaking to his son. I said, Alan told me he has a daughter away. He said, I never met her. I said, well, I think so. I believe it because Alan told me that. Alan, I'm a nurse. Alan told me, I said, Alan, I'm going to retire and come home, but you know, I have to go up and down. He said, well, I have a daughter who's a nurse, and I want both of you all to open a business here. It makes money, plenty money plenty money. So come on home and I'll take you to my daughter. But I never get to meet the daughter. But I met the son and he is a gentleman. Nice and polite. He said, I was up at the hospital. He said, my daddy's sick. I said, I'm sick. I saw Alan in the emergency room. I was going to the bathroom. He said, mm, make a sign here on the bed. I said, come up, man. And I saw the son, and I said, I'm Alan's friend. But the day Alan passed, I was to go back to look for Alan the day after. And I didn't get to see Alan. But all I would say, Alan was a gentleman, kind, mannerly, respectable. Talk about your PNME politics, and he loved his Glen Road Community Center. Oh, Lord. And Alan was an honest person. I would tell you, Alan would talk about who's stealing there, who want him to bring things. He was honest. And he was a gentleman. And my condolence to this family. Judging from the tributes, it seemed like Mr. Richardson was really a kind-hearted, loving, and generous guy. We need more people like Mr. Richardson in the, on the island of Tobago who care about people, who will go the extra mile to help people. At this time, we want to welcome to the podium the person who will eulogize Mr. Richardson, we want to call Diane Richardson at this time as she does the eulogy. I greet each and every one in the precious name of Jesus. Pleasant good afternoon to all. It is with a heavy heart that I stand before you today to pay tribute to my dad in celebration of his life and times. Carlton Adolphus Richardson, also known as Alan and Sharpman, was born on the 18th of November, 1949, in San Fernando, Trinidad, to Ethel Richardson and Cecil Kent. At the age of three, he was brought to Tobago by his mother. He grew up at Darrell Spring Trace, Scarborough. 
Two years later, he was joined by his only sibling, Cynthia Edwards. Along with his sister, Cynthia, he attended the Scarborough Roman Catholic School, where he received his elementary education. During his tenure at the school, he also attended the Scarborough Roman Catholic Church, where he served as an acolyte. He was reportedly an ardent footballer who represented his school competitively. I was told that because he was particularly a skillful footballer, he earned his nickname Soccer. Upon completion of his primary school education, he later attended Guy's Polytechnic School, located at Young Street, Scarborough. Post his stint at Guy's Poly Polytechnic Institution, he was employed at the Butter Shoe Store for approximately six years. As a sales clerk, and he was the manager, manager's right hand. I was also told he used to neat, he was neatly dressed at all times, shirt inside pants and tie. Most persons who came in there thought he was the manager <laughs> of that establishment. Here he was given the nickname Sharp Man because of his sharp dressing. He was always neatly attired and well-groomed. As some of us will recall, this store was located next to Barclays Bank on the main street of up Uptown Scarborough. Upon leaving Butter, he became a professional painter. This became his livelihood for the rest of his working life. Around the mid-70s, he started a relationship with my mother, which produced two children, myself, Diane, and my brother, Desmond. From a personal perspective, I can say without reservation that he was deeply invested in ensuring that my brother and I received a sound education. This was of paramount importance to him. Daddy was an excellent provider for his family and was very protective of his children. He would tolerate no nonsense from anyone where his children were concerned. On this note, I recall one occasion where there was an incident at the primary school sports involving the principal, myself, and another student. I had cause to complain to Daddy, who promptly con fronted the principal to deal with the situation. Daddy, was, Daddy also taught Desmond to become a painter. He was a generous person who was always willing to assist others financially by giving advice or giving practical help. My father was actively involved in community life. In this regard, he was a long-standing member of the Glen Road Village Council and Environs. He first served as Vice President of the Village Council under the leadership of El Mr. Eldon Cole. Subsequently, as a president for a period of time. Now, the Glen Road Village Council, although it's Glen Road, it constitutes environs, which is like Idlewild, Dallas Spring, all of them is one community. Sub Subsequently, as a president, now he served as a president there for a period of time. During his presidency, he was instrumental in, expan in the expansion and fencing of the community center, where under the astute leadership, a wide array of activities took place. This included skills training, floral arrangement, drapery, food preservation, and gardening. C classes and dramology classes. The center also served as a venue for a wide range of events such as weddings, christening, birthday parties, church services, and meetings. He was a political activist of sorts. Admittedly, his political views and allegiances embedded and followed according to the fluctuating 
political currents of the day or season. Daddy was born, Daddy was not born with a gold spoon in his mouth. In a true sense, he was a was simple and, and humble person who understood the concept and importance of values and character. He always emphasized the true significance of ambition and hard work to my brother and I. He was always loud in his praises whenever one of his children achieved something notable. He was indeed incredibly proud of us. Inevitably, with advancing years, there was a corresponding decline in his health. He was admitted to the hospital sometime in January of this year, where his medical, where the medical and nursing staff of the Scarborough General Hospital rendered excellent treatment and care to him, for which I am especially thankful. On Tuesday, 27 February, he transitioned from this realm peacefully. It is left now only for me to thank Almighty God for the privilege of having had him among us for 74 long years. Well done, Dad. You have been a credit to all of humanity. Now, may you find that well-deserved rest and comfort in the arms of your maker. Until we meet again on that fateful day, sleep in peace, Daddy. May you rest in peace. Amen. At this time, we invite you to stand as we take up this afternoon's offering. And while the offering is being picked up, we're going to call the worship team back. We want to really and truly encourage you to give a good offering. There are things that you need to do. The offering goes towards assisting. We have a school downstairs, a preschool downstairs. It goes to assist persons downstairs with things that they may not be able to afford. We, it goes towards assisting children and also parents in the community. So we ask that you give a good offering this afternoon. Amen. So in the precious seas. So in the precious seas, so in the precious seas, reaping time is coming by and by. So in the precious seas, so in the precious seas, reaping time is coming by and by. Someday in glory, you will find me, you will find me, you will find me. Someday. You will find me, I sing and I shout and for eternity, for my mind's made up and I won't turn back. I'm going to see my Jesus someday, for my mind's made up and I won't turn back. I'm going to meet my Jesus someday, someday, someday. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh, we look forward to that day when we are truly caught up to meet the Lord in the air. What a day, what a day. Someday, someday. At this time, we want to welcome the man who will bring the word of God to us. He is 
the Bishop of the Open Bible Standard Churches here in Tobago. I want you all to welcome Bishop Dr. Roll Reed as he ministers this afternoon's sermon. God is a good God. You can have your seat. On behalf of myself and my family, who were neighbors with this simple but great man of God and his sister, we express our condolences to this family. I remember him as a very simple man one and two times he was in the crusade where we started this church in a shed in Darrell Spring. And today I want to more speak on a topic that is very important to us all. Very, very important. But we are not aware of the important of our soul. We are not aware of the importance of our soul. And I should say some of us. So can you just bow your head? Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your graces that you had bestowed upon Carlton. We ask today that many will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior as we all gather here for his home-going service in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to speak on the value of the human soul. And I'll be more reading the scriptures than preaching. Because I realize that we live in a time of debt and desol desolation. Never in my lifetime, born on this island, I've ever seen people dying like now. And I think it is most important for us all to realize the importance of our immortal soul, the value of it. So I want to read from the first book of Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. This is the first book of the Bible, rather, Genesis. It reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, it reads, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let me just open our eyes here. What God did, he formed the man from the dust of the ground. That means he formed the body of the man from the dust of the ground. And then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. In other words, God breathed his life into the clay. And man became a living soul. 
So from that scripture in the book of Genesis, one will have realized, especially one who study Hebrew, that after God formed the man, every part of his body, including the bones, the body lies there, dormant. But when God breathed, the body which is the house, the man became a living soul. So man really is a triune being. Man lives in a earth house. Man has a soul and man is a spirit. The spirit and the soul is so connected that you can not separate them. At death, the man will breathe his last breath out of his body. And therefore, the soul will leave his body. The spirit goes back to God. And this is the remains of Calton. I want to open our eyes from the scripture. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 4 says, Behold, all the souls are mines. The souls of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. And it was when Adam sinned against God, death entered into man. It was not possible for man to die. Man was formed by God to live forever. But because man disobey God, death enter. By one man's disobedience, death enter into the world. It was not God's intention, it was not in God's plan for we to experience death. So let me read our next scripture again. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dish it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And that is why the Bible says, For the wages of sin is debt, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So that is how death enter into the world. I read the word to you, and Right, that's why I'm taking my time today. I don't feel like preaching and jumping today. <laughs> why the soul is important. Why the soul is important. You as a humankind lives in a earth house. You are a soul. I read the scripture that indicates God says all the souls are minds. So you are very important to God. Because God owns you. Why your soul is important? It is very important because your soul is immortal. Your soul lives on after your body is dead. Let me just read what Jesus said 
In Mark 8, verse 36, 37, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? So you know that, that Jesus speaks about the man and his soul. Or the person and his soul. Your soul is important because it is the inner man, the real man who lives forever when the body is dead. So what we have here is his remains, but he is alive, much more alive than me and you. He is still alive because his soul left his body and his spirit went back to God. His body died. His body is dead. Because through his body, he was world conscious. He could speak, he could handle, he could touch. But because his soul has gone, his memory gone, because his soul has gone, his emotion is gone, but he's still alive. And Jesus Christ give us what happens after the body dies. And I just want to read it from the Bible. Because God said to me, son, give them my word. Your people are dying. And they need to know the importance of their soul. That's why he said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? Everything that he has gained in this world is no use to him now. Is no use to him now. He cannot do anything again in this world. Because his body is dead. The body makes us world conscious. We can move, we can talk, we can handle, we can reason. But Jesus reveals something to us. He reveals what happens after the body is dead. And I want to read this from the Bible. I'm just going to read, give you the word of God. From the book of Luke, chapter 16, reading from verse 19. This is Jesus. He says, there was a certain man, and Jesus always liked to refrain from calling people's name. You know, sometimes when you call name, you just be in trouble. <laughs> so I like what Jesus used to do. There was a certain woman, he ain't called no woman name. Today we like to call name and bring a lot of confusion. So I just do like Jesus in my preaching. So here what he says, there was a certain, and he says, rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fare sumptuously every day. Now in the days of Jesus and before Jesus, purple, fine linen, was very, very expensive. Only the rich and the mighty could have purchased them. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, 
full of sores. Pity this, the condition of this man. So you could see that this man was very poor. And desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. No cheer. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus telling us about this man and the other person, Lazarus. Hear what Jesus said. It came to pass that the beggar died, that is the poor man, and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. The rich man died and he was what? Buried. In a moment we will put his body down in the grave. So what we are noticing here, Jesus is talking about two dead men. We know that there is such thing as the funeral of the soul. Because the soul is more real than the body. But we know that angels came after the beggar died and took Lazarus. I don't know if his demons came and took the rich man out. So you are noticing the funeral of two men. One angel came and took him out. Somebody or some other being came and took out the rich man according to Jesus here. And note, we're talking about a dead man. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. So notice that the soul has what? Eyes. Being in torment and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Two dead men still alive in a different world. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. You remember Lazarus? That he may dip the tip of his finger in torment. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So notice that the two men that had died still have their emotions. So that is why when a person dies, breathe their last breath out of their body, the emotions gone. The senses gone. The reason gone. So what we are noticing here, the real man is the inner man in the body. And the real man lives on after the body dies. Let's follow the scripture. So you note, the rich man had eyes you note his, emotion, his emotions were functional. You note he cries. He was still speaking. He was asking for mercy. You note his memory was intact. He says, send Lazarus, the guy who had sores, and maybe his dogs used to lick the sores. He says, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. My people, watch your tongue. For Christ said, every word spoken shall give account. The person who spoke the word shall give account. The man was asking Abraham, to send Lazarus to just dip his finger in some water to cool my tongue. 
We live in a generation where people think they could say what they want, do what they want. Sometimes even children have no respect for their parents. I've had parents told me things. What the children said to them and I have to ask the parents, are you telling me the truth? Your son said that to you. Your daughter said that to you. That's the kind of generation we live in. That's why we have preachers have to take our time and preach the word of God. But hear what Abraham said. But Abraham said, son, remember that you in your lifetime receive the good things and Lazarus the evil thing. So you note here that memory was intact. I'm talking about a dead man. His memory was intact. They were functional. But hear what Abraham said. Now, he is comfort and you are tormented. And beside all of this, between us and you, there is a great goal fix so that he said there is a great goal fix so that they which pass from here to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. So God Almighty in his wisdom fix a gulf. And it seems when you study the Bible, there is a place for the righteous dead and there is a place for the wicked dead. And in this time before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there was a place in the underworld called Abraham's bosom. This world is not the only world. There is a spirit world in the heavens. There is a place called the underworld. These other two worlds are more real than our world. And that is why Christ said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? So we know there what Jesus is indicating to us. Hear the man. Then he says, I pray or I beg you, therefore, Father, calling Abraham Father, that you will send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come in this place of torment. Jesus will not lie to us. There is a place called heaven. There is a place called hell. There is a place of rest and there is a place of torment. In a matter of fact, scientists have proven that there is an underworld. They were doing something and they heard screaming. They heard talking. And you're looking at a man who literally met a man from Nigeria who had died. He went to hell and he went to heaven. I sat with him in this very office. That used to be my office. My office is over there. And he gave me his story. He came and he slept in my house for one night. I sat down with him and he gave me the whole story of his experience. This was on CNN. There's a book out, I have the cassette. 
When he give me the story, I touch the man I know is a man I'm, t I'm talking to. I literally touch him. I say, let me feel if you are a human being <laughs> that went to hell and went to heaven. He indicated to me that the other two worlds are more real than this world. We brought him in to Bigo in Shaw Park and sadly, few people were there. Something like that, you tell yourself the place will be jam-packed. In other places, you couldn't hold people. We brought a lady who went to heaven, went to hell. We didn't build up there yet. She was right here on our platform. We brought her here in Tobago. And I talked to these people. After death, there is judgment. After you depart from here, you go into a real world. It is more real than this world. See, I wasn't preaching. Let me just give you another scripture. <laughs> now, Jesus said, one soul of the human being is more valuable uh, than this whole material world. Jesus will not lie to us, you know. Jesus indicates, therefore, that the soul of a vagrant, of the poorest humankind, is more valuable than this whole world. Now, a man like me, I either stink or just use my mind. I will try to realize why. So if I not, my mind will travel, and then I look into the Bible, and then I realize God created one man. He formed one man. And hand over the world to that one man. Look how much powerful, rich nations we have came out of that one man. So Jesus knew exactly what he was saying to us. That a soul of the humankind is much more valuable than this whole world. Because the world has wealth. Who discovered the wealth of the world? Mankind. Right now, as I am speaking here, I could talk to the whole world through modern technology. But God created the world with the abilities for the social media, for medical science. So Jesus knew, knew what he was saying. Now, hear what Jesus said in Matthew 18 and verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. In Luke 19 verse 10, he says, For the Son of Man is came to seek and to save that which was lost. So only Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, can save your soul, my soul. Only him. You see the reason why he came? He said, for I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Because our greatest need is life. And that is the God type of life. So only Jesus can save the soul. Nobody else. No religion. No preacher. No gold. No silver. Only Jesus. So what about your soul today? That is so precious. That is eternal. 
Have you been saved by Jesus Christ? Have your soul been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb? Only Jesus. Only Jesus. And I thank him for the privilege. I used to do that a lot before COVID, you know. But people dying so much now. I don't do that again. You know. The first thing I used to do in a funeral is come down, knock the casket, call the person by the name, and said, I thank you for this privilege. Why? This is the reality that we all have to face one day. This is the equalizer. You know, some of us tell ourselves we're big and we're better than people. This is the equalizer. This is the final journey that all of us must take. And you have to take it without making a choice. It will take you. You know why? It took even the Son of God, very God. He died, you know. No humankind can escape death. But thank God for Jesus. He came to bring an end to death, which is the last enemy. So the only way we can escape this is to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's why he said, Martha! I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am the life giver. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And those that believe in me shall never, never taste of death. Because he has the power to give us a new body. So it's just this that will go down into the grave. And it seems like when you study the scripture, wherever the body is, it seems like the soul used to be there. But you know I found out something? Let me read scripture because I can pick up something from your mind. At the resurrection of Jesus Christ, after the resurrection, the Bible says that Jesus brought up. As a matter of fact, the Bible indicates that he went into the prison. And that word prison in the original mean the place of the abode of the dead. And it seemed like they had two places, one called Abraham's bosom, and one called Hades, Gehenna. And Jesus went and he ministered to the spirits in prison that after his resurrection, people came out from their graves. Let me just read it. i close off my iPad, but I want to read this last scripture to you and I'm done. So after today, some of you will have no excuse. I just say some powerful things, so I have to. Like I didn't put that scripture there, but it's somewhere in Matthew. See so if you could find that for me fast. I want to read that scripture to them. Because I want every person here today, from today, must do something about the immortal soul. Somewhere in Matthew or Mark, after the resurrection, the Bible tells us that many came out from the graves. The graves were open. And many came out from the graves and appear unto others. So if you use your mind, 
it seemed like people like Abraham, like Job, and these guys, Jacob and these guys, they came out and they literally appear onto people. People recognize them. Now use your mind. If this there for centuries in the grave, don't you think that it will rot away? <laughs> and so the soul is something different from the body. Just as Jesus, when Jesus rose, he rose with the same body, yet a different body, a glorified body. Mortal put on immortality. And this is what, my people, we all must live for. Will nobody fool you? There is life after death. Be wise and make provision for your immortal soul. And Paul explained that God will give us a new body. I love gardening. I'm a planter. When I plant corn seed, a tree does come out from that seed. And sometimes I have greens. I notice that the outer shell does die and a new one does come up. Don't just live for this world alone. Live for the world to come and make provision for your immortal soul. Because if you die outside of Christ, you will spend eternity in a real world, but it's a world of torment. So I want us to bow our heads. And I do this all the time because I believe what the word of God says. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The word says, if we believe in our hearts that God has sent Jesus Christ and we confess in our mouths or from our mouths, we shall be saved. So I want to ask everybody to confess. And let us do this on behalf of the whole of Tobago. Even though you are already saved, do it on behalf of the whole of Tobago. Be talking to God on behalf of ourselves and the whole of this little island that is changing rapidly. Now say this with me. Oh God Almighty, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon us as a people. And forgive me of all my sins. And cleanse us of all our sins. And let Jesus Christ, your son, become my personal savior. Become the savior of my people. Now, if you have said that prayer, you are saved. You are saved. This has nothing to do with no religion. You are saved. I literally experienced this. That I used to go in all them crusades. In Speyside, where the seven days crusade, the seven days used to have some big crusades there, the Pentecostal, uh, smoking my grass. I never used to curse. And I'll go up to the altar and I will say the sinner's prayer. And I'll tell them, guy, boy, I save. I'm a Christian. Next two days I turn back, you know. <laughs> but I thank God. That because I used to always go up to the altar, God just changed my life just so. When they are walking down the east-west corridor, you see, just as I am speaking to you now, you're hearing my voice. I heard the voice of God calling me by my name and tell me to repent. And I was changed into another man. That's why I just preach so passionate. I was changed into another man. 
So I know what I'm talking about. This salvation thing is real. It's not religion. Took me into places like Africa, China, all over the world. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not religion. It's Jesus. So you that confess, you are saved. Just start to go to church. Some of you have turned your back upon the church. The church is good. Find a church and serve God. And don't have problem with your imperfection. You know. It takes time. I've been served, saved for 43 years now. And I still am perfect. But I know I'm safe. That way religion does mess up your head, you know. The only perfect human that walks this earth is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Find a church and serve God. In spirit and in truth, sister, you're right. You know, let, let me do it. I know, I know feel the preaching spirit just come up here. <laughs> Pastor Gary, I feel this preaching spirit. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Come on, Pastor Anton. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. What a powerful sermon. Amen. A powerful sermon. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. For those of you all who wanted to find out where the scripture that he was referring to, you can go and read it at your at home. It's Matthew chapter 27, reading from verse 50, right? Matthew 27, it's right there where the graves were opened and those that were in the graves walked bodily out of the graves. Amen? So at this time, we want to call Pastor Gary and we want to invite the family to stand and just come forward and just stand to the front of the altar. We just want to say a prayer for you. So all family members, you can stand, just come and stand right before the altar. And we're going to ask Pastor Gary just to lift you up in prayer. Family members. We could have the families and relatives also. Right, so we want to ask the congregation to stand. And we want to ask you to just stretch your hands towards them in this time of grieving and bereavement and mourning for God to comfort them and to grant them the grace to go through this period of time. So let's bow our hearts and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace towards us in Jesus' name. Today, oh God, we lift this family before you, oh God, and every relative in the name of Jesus that are here standing, oh God. We pray that you are going to comfort them in this time of bereavement, this time of mourning, this time of heartbrokenness. You promised that you are going to heal the brokenhearted, and we pray today, O oh God, that you will bring healing to every soul that is grieving, that is mourning, that is going through a period of sorrow. We pray, O oh God, that you will bring them through this time, O oh God, of what they are experiencing because of the passing of their loved one. In the name of Jesus, we know that death is not easily or something easy to bear because you speak about the sting of death. And so we know that everyone that loses a loved one experiences that sting. And, oh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus, you are going to bring them to you, are going to comfort them in this time of bereavement. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for you are the God of comfort, and we pray that you will bring comfort in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And everybody say, praise the Lord. God bless you. You can go back to your seat.
and then you'll get further in instructions. Praise the Lord. All right. Before we, well, we're going to close now, as we just closed. Um, we're going to offer persons another opportunity to do a viewing, and we're going to do the viewing right in front, right in front here. So persons, if you are interested in doing another viewing, you don't leave us yet. We're going to call the persons to open the, the, the casket for a final viewing, right after which we will be going to the backlit cemetery where we're going to commit the body to the ground. So we want to call the the pallbearers, if they can come at this time, just to open the casket. When you are coming to view, please come down on the outer aisles and you exit through the center aisle. If you're already there, no problem, but for, if you're coming after, you're coming down the outer aisles and when you exit, you're going down through the center because you want to keep, so we want to keep the center aisles clear. If you are not interested in viewing, you are free to, to depart and we're going to go into the backlit cemetery for the committal.
It is here that we pay the last respect of the living to the dead. A man that is born of a woman had but a short time to live and is full of trouble. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. In the midst of life, we are in the midst of death. And from whom can we seek for help but from the Lord? who is justly displeased with our sins. This is the end of all the living. May the living laid to heart. There is no work, no knowledge, no device, no wisdom in the grave to which we go. Knowing that it is appointed unto man once to die after this to judgment. Let us here purpose to seek the Lord with all our hearts and respond to the opportunities of salvation extended us through His grace. The scripture said it is God's goodness that lead us to repentance and repentance lead us to His greatest gift, the gift of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. May each gift of God's goodness remind us of His love towards us in Christ. We commit now the body of this loved one to this resting place. The spirit we live with God, for we know the judge of all the earth will do right. So they can let them go. So thus you are, and thus you shall return. Right, so the, the um, go ahead and bear it. It's too bad for me. And they shovel it next time. Yeah, more. It's too bad for me. Yeah, yeah. Right, do you have any, um, anybody who can sing something like that? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember?
Don't deal with the bad guys. But the bad guys is good guys. Oh, 
Everything to God 
unto thee. The Lord lifted up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So may God bless. <laughs> and now look at Leola. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, Leo, I, I, need, I need to read down inside here. This one here. Right. So I have one more request. 
the youth funeral agency would like to say something. So, who is the person? Will be the speaker. <coughs> right. So the person is coming forward. The camera will want to pick you up. Which way the camera will see? Where do we need to go? I let you first pick one boy, like he ready to fly. I let you go, like he ready to fly, boy. He ready to fly, I let you go. The first pick one, I let you go. Not yet. Not yet. Call him back, 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 yeah, everybody attention can turn this way the guy. So everybody could focus this way. Yes, man. Yes, man. Can I just give you all attention, please? Yeah, yeah. That's not what you want. Right, folks, please. Everyone with balloons, could you just come on this side? But it's, the dogs have already been released. For some reason or the other. But nonetheless, we still have some balloons, right? So, so persons with the balloons, could you all just come on this side? It will be a temporary person. Nobody Arnel Jones, this is, this is Sharon Clark, and Tanya Clark, and Sir Israel Clark, and what we know as, who we know as Winky originally, Good Night. We are here today to celebrate the life of. And as it stands, a lot has been said at the church in respect of Mr. Richardson. And we basically know that Mr. Richardson has, has lived a life, a very good life. Unfortunately, things happen and his time has passed. Mr. Richardson is now in a good place, despite the circumstances. And we are here basically to give thanks, to give praise, and to just enjoy that moment that we would have had with him there and then when he was alive. We have a very small, uh, let's say a, a very small process that we go through in terms of the release of doves and balloons. It's not religious, nonetheless the, the doves have gone. So we're now going to release the balloons, okay? Yeah, the, the doves have gone. So we're now going to release the balloons. So we're asking kindly for the persons with the balloons just to raise. Yeah, and we're going to have a little countdown. Uh, yeah, some may have it, but that's all right. So we're going to count from five, please. All right? From five. And on one, we'll have a release. So one, two, three, four, three. Five. Five, sorry. Really? 